Today we're going to go off on a little side quest from the Cooking Challenge series. We're going to go and do something a little bit different today. TK Maxx is a chain of mainly fashion retailers in the UK called TJ Maxx elsewhere in the world, called TK Maxx here because of a branding or trademark collision. Now they do also sell food, but usually quite a strange selection of stuff. In the run up to Christmas, which is not now, they have a lot of food, a lot of kind of gift food type items like panettone, boxes of chocolates, things like that. For the rest of the year, they've got a smaller selection of mainly imported foods, I think. And so there are a bunch of things there. The challenge today is going to be, can I make a meal? Can I make a coherent meal from things I only buy at TK Maxx? That's pretty much the only rule. Water from the kitchen, salt and pepper, I think we'll have as usual. Herbs, spices, sauces, only if I can get them there at TK Maxx. I have a feeling today is going to be some kind of a pasta dish. I hope it's not going to be just a case of assembling some things that are meant to go together as purchased. So no limited budget, no other rules. Let's go shopping. Right, here comes the haul. So, fusiloni pasta, £2.79 for 400 grams of pasta. Uh, this is just a durum wheat pasta, it's not an egg noodle, which looks like it might be bronze dye because it's all rough on the surface. Chickpea butter, nut free, dairy free, no preservatives, no artificial colours and flavours. £2. This was in the reduced section. It was previously £3.99. And this is just chickpea vegetable oils, which is coconut and rapeseed, honey powder and sheer butter. I got some salsa roja, tomato chunks, arbol chilies, condiments, which is salt, vegetable oil, tartaric acid, vinegar and spices. So this is a tomato-y, peppery sauce. £1.80, and again, this was reduced. Looks like it's been reduced twice, I would say. And the original price was 2 pounds Shiitake mushroom chips, £2.99. And these are just shiitake mushrooms, maltose, and sustainable palm oil. So these are kind of dried, fried mushrooms. Onion chips, £2.99. And this is white onion, purple onion, sunflower and or cold pressed canola oil, sea salt, tapioca starch. Sun-dried tomatoes, £2.99 in vegetable oil, 
So this is marinated sun-dried tomatoes, 53%, sun-dried tomatoes, white wine, vinegar, salt, acidity regulator, citric acid, antioxidant, ascorbic acid, sunflower oil, extra virgin olive oil, oregano. And a bit of a strange kind of wild card almost ingredient, pitted dried prunes, pound seventy. Now I originally picked these up because I was eyeing up a big jar of pickled olives and gherkins and other bits and pieces in there and I thought we might need something to balance out the acid. I did then later put that jar back and got these sun-dried tomatoes instead of those pickles but I thought we'd keep the prunes in there just to keep it interesting. This was pound seventy, and again it looks like it's been reduced three times from an original price of three ninety nine. And lastly, some maize tortillas. One pound eighty, reduced again. Looks like it's been reduced down twice from an original price of two ninety nine. What's the date on these? The date code on these is. 14th of July, 24. So these have got another couple of months on them. These are fully corn tortillas. Last time I bought something labelled corn tortillas, it was actually wheat tortillas with a bit of corn in them. This is made from nixtamalized yellow corn flour, 52% water, stabiliser xanthan gum. I'm sure that's not traditional. Salt and preservative. Anyway, that's the haul. And that wasn't cheap. I haven't added up all of those prices because the receipt's got a couple of other things on it. So the total of that is on the screen now, including the total of what it would have been if these things hadn't been reduced. Interestingly, I think what we've got here is a vegetarian selection of things. It's not vegan because I, the chickpea butter does contain honey. But apart from that, certainly vegetarian. I was kind of hoping I would be able to pick up a salami, chorizo or some beef jerky or something. But here we are. We've got vegetables. We've got fruits, we've got something potentially creamy. I think we can make some dishes out of this. And I think rather than just make one dish, I think we'll make a main course, we'll make a starter, and we'll make a snack. Let's get cooking. All right, these are the ingredients we've got to work with today. And before we get started, I just wanna have a taste of some of these, really just to see what we're working with. So this chickpea butter, I assume this is, you know, a peanut butter alternative perhaps for people with peanut allergies or something. So there is a layer of oil on the top there. Consistency looks a lot like a smooth peanut butter. Perhaps a little bit more uh, gelatinous. That's probably too much for a taste. Let's have a little bit less than that. That's what it looks like. What does it taste like? Actually really good. I would say more nutty than peanut butter. Also a slightly fruity note in there. I suppose that's the honey. Okay, so I know what that's all about. Now I did say one of the dishes I've got to make today is a snack. And of course, these are snacks. Now of course I could just tip some of these out in a bowl and that would be a snack, but that's not really what I'm aiming for when I say I wanna make a snack. Anyway, they are nicely defined little slices of shiitake cap. So that's what they look like and they are crispy. Let's try a piece. Less mushroomy than I expected. A little bit earthy. Quite kind of neutral in flavour. Just sweetish mild mushroom flavour. Not salty. And these onion chips. Well I got hit by a strong smell of onion as soon as I opened the bag. Okay and these are just pieces of onion. So yeah they're almost puffed up. And to taste? Very light. Sweet, very pure onion flavour. Again, not too salty, which is good if we're using them as an ingredient. Hmm, you've got to stop eating those, those are really good. I think I will just have a little taste of this salsa roja. Just really see what we're dealing with here. Picante. There's a little bit of fire there, which is very pleasant. So, we're not going to be short of flavour and spiciness today. Okay, well, that was interesting tasting those things and worthwhile doing that without making assumptions about what I think they're going to be. So I think it's worth trying to rehydrate some of these shiitake chips. I do not think it's worth trying to rehydrate these onion chips. I think they'll just go into a soggy mess. But a few of these mushrooms, just some cold water, and cover those up while we take the doggo out for a walk.
Hey Eva, I love you. Right, I'm going to take about two teaspoons full of this chickpea butter, including the fat that was at the top, the oil layer that's floating on the top there. Particularly want that. Sun-dried tomatoes in vegetable oil and a little bit of the water from soaking these mushrooms. They're not completely hydrated yet. They are softening up a bit. But I just want a tiny bit of the water. And then I'm going to whisk in some of this oil. Right, tiny taste. Oh, interesting. There is a smokiness that's come here from somewhere. And this is going to be seasoned with some of these onion chips crushed into dust. Another little taste. Needs more onion. I'm not even really sure what you'd call that. And then another thing is going to be to take a couple of these sun-dried tomatoes, chop them up as finely as we can. And then in here, we're going to have some of these red pieces of onion. Something like that. A little dash of salsa roja. So there we go. That's some kind of a dip type of thing or sauce. Let's have a taste. Mm, yeah, it's all right. One thing I want to do before assembling the snack, I've got my little spice grinder here. We'll just have a few of those mushroom chips in there and a few of the onion chips. And you need mushroom dust. Don't breathe this. Snack assembly time. One of these maize tortillas. Might as well take one that's already a bit bust up. And over here at the cooker, we'll put this pan over heat and a bit of that oil from the sun-dried tomatoes in there. Maybe like a tablespoonful and get that nice and hot. Well, we've got to be careful because this is infused with the sugars and stuff from the tomatoes, so it will burn. Okay, that ought to be hot enough now. Let's just give it a little. Yep, that's sizzling. That's good. That's what I want. Okay, heat off now. Those can come out onto some kitchen paper towel. Now I'm not gonna try and shake all of the oil off of there because it's got some flavor in it and it will help the other bit to stick to it. So while these are still hot, I'm just tossing them in that onion and mushroom dust. And I think they will need a little bit of salt because nothing we tasted this morning was salty. Okay, I think we're ready to plate up. No reason why we can't have a few of these onion and mushroom chips as they are. Okay, there we go, chips and dips. That is my snack from these ingredients. Let's give it a taste. Well, tortilla chips on their own first with the mushroom dust coating. Really good, just on their own. With the chickpea dip, that is good. Sort of sweet and creamy, nutty. I might need a spoon to help load this one up. This. Sandro tomato salsa. Also very tasty. So, what about in combination? Mm hmm. Yeah, that works all right. These onion chips are really strange. Almost no substance to them, but they have got quite a flavour. And the tortilla chips are really nice and crisp. Not quite such a puffy texture as, say, Doritos, but these are nice. These are a bit more. A bit more solid, but they're nice for it. That was actually probably one of the nicer things I've ever eaten on one of these videos. Now for the starter dish, I thought I'd like to make tacos. Uh, now, got almost none of the right ingredients apart from the tortillas and this sauce. It would be really nice if we had some meat or some beans or some cheese to put in a tortilla. We haven't got any of those things. Although actually, interestingly, there was a really kind of weird outlier meat option available at TK Maxx, which was the pet food section. There were things like dried salmon fillets or jerky type things for dogs on that section. And generally those things have to be fit for human consumption these days. But 
I don't think I'm quite ready to do the just buy the pet food things challenge yet. Maybe another time. Anyway, so we're going to have to improvise, which is going to be, well, I've got these mushrooms now and these have rehydrated. So they have gone back to sort of normal mushroom texture. So over here, again, a little bit of that oil from the sun-dried tomatoes, not a lot. And because I don't want these to spit too much, I'm going to put the mushrooms straight in there before the pan completely heats up. I think we'll keep this. I don't even know if that's mushroom stock, but I think we'll keep it just in case. We will have a little bit of salt in with these mushrooms just to draw the moisture out. I know I've just spent all morning putting moisture into them, but that was to bring them back to mushroom texture. Now we need to fry them, which is going to dry some of the moisture out. While that's happening, and I know this is a weird idea, let's have a few of these prunes out of here. Now, I don't know if I'm the first person ever to consider putting prunes in a taco, but I mean, look at the texture of it. It's got a bit of chew to it. Sweetish, but I mean, they've got a slight smokiness to them where they've been dried. So I don't know. I don't think it's the weirdest thing, but I'm going to shred these up into strips like that. So I think we might get away with this. They're only about as sweet as a tomato. Mushrooms, by the way, are looking good. Look at these sun-dried tomatoes. And again, I'm going to cut these into strips so that we've got some texture in there. We don't have meat. We don't really have any of the right things. So that's the sun-dried tomatoes. I think I'll put them in the pan just to warm them through. It did occur to me, actually, maybe I didn't look hard enough. There might have been a tin of sardines lurking somewhere in that store. And maybe that would have been a better choice than the prunes. But anyway, we are where we are. But I did look quite thoroughly. I don't think I missed one. And then we'll have the prunes in there as well. Just again, to warm through, to caramelise a tiny bit. Just to soften the texture. Right, that heat can go off now. Now I'm going to get a dry pan here, my cast iron pan, nice and hot. I might use this mushroom water for sprinkling on the tortillas to keep them moist. I don't think we're quite hot enough yet. Right, we must be. Yeah, that's hot enough now. Okay, so in the pan, a little sprinkling of water. Okay, on the other side. Okay, that can come out. The other one in. Now I'll put a lid over that just to keep that warm. Right, so this is only supposed to be a starter. So I've got my two warmed tortillas here. Mushrooms. Oh, actually, do you know what I'm going to do first? At the risk of making everything today taste exactly the same, I'll have a little smear of this chickpea stuff down there like that. My taco meat made of prunes, sun-dried tomatoes and mushrooms. Don't hate me, this is what I'm, I'm just working with what I got here. Salsa roja and a little scattering of these onion chips on top. Okay, well, weirdest tacos ever, but are they going to be any good? Okay. Okay, not even remotely authentic, I'm certain, but actually pretty good. Frying those mushrooms has definitely brought the flavour right up. The salsa roja is doing a fair old bit of the lifting here. I'm not a taco expert, so I can't tell you how good a taco this is. But it does taste good. If I was blindfold, I wouldn't be able to tell you that the prunes are prunes. There's quite a lot of juice still coming out of those mushrooms. Quite tasty. Those were surprisingly okay. So now that I know this works, I'm going to throw a bunch more of those mushrooms in there to soak for the main course. Since we have some ingredients to spare, let's try making another little snack. One of these to start with. A very, very thin layer of chickpea butter. Try and spread that out as evenly as I can, and also as close to the edges as I can. Prunes, since we have an abundance of them. And shred them extremely thinly. And the idea here is I will scatter these on top of that tortilla. Again, aiming for as even distribution as possible. Then another tortilla, also spread with some of this chickpea butter. 
something like that. And that is going to go on top. And that's going to go in the oven now for maybe only about five, six minutes. Okay. I did take that out and flip it midway. I have no idea what to call this or even what I'm doing here really, but now, I'm not going to just dig into this because it's going to be like fruity, nutty napalm inside. But I feel like cutting it while it's hot is prudent because these tortillas will probably dry out a bit further as they stand. Let's just have a look and see what that looks like. Well, it's held together. It has kind of baked down together. And perhaps this will be nice with a cup of coffee. OK, I feel like that's probably cooled down enough now that I dare risk it. It is some kind of a sandwich thing. I have no idea what to call this. Not sure whether I like that or not. Piece of prune stone there. Very nearly took out a tooth. Yeah, I'm not sure what to make of that. Tastes a bit like jam tarts or something. I think if that had a bit of chocolate in it, that would actually be rather good. It all does work though. It does have the feel of something that wasn't just invented today. I don't know. Maybe it is, maybe this exists already. The chickpea butter is quite sticky in here. Obviously, it's dried out a little bit. But actually, that makes it go well with coffee. Maybe it would be better if that was baked until they're completely crisp. I didn't want to risk it. I'm glad this is only the bonus snack. I think the chips and dips beats this by a mile. So the main course is going to be some of this pasta with some kind of sauce. Probably the most obvious dish of the lot. But anyway, let's get going. Before we start on the pasta, though, I want to make something to sprinkle on top of the finished dish. In the absence of breadcrumbs, I'm going to blend up one of these tortillas. Hmm. I thought that would break into crumbs a bit more easily than that. OK, I might have to just crumble that by hand. OK, that'll do. I'm going to toast these gently over a low heat to make something a bit like breadcrumbs to go on top of my pasta. All right, I'm going to keep these moving because I don't want them to burn. Right, I'm going to turn the heat off on that now. Just let that just continue drying out. It's gone kind of crumbly. And to season those crumbs, we're going to use the rest of these onion chips. So my crispy tortilla crumbs. And onion dust. How did those bits escape being crushed? So we've got some kind of a topping thing to put on the pasta. Instead of, obviously, we'd normally put grated cheese on there, but we have no cheese. I think we'll have some pepper in there. And some salt. Okay. Let's give that a taste. Mm, it's quite interesting. Now, the sauce for the pasta. The sauce for the pasta is going to be, well, some of this this salsa roja and I know this is weird but some of this cashew butter now if you think about pesto pesto is made from pine nuts or often actually I think cashew nuts as a substitute so perhaps we can have a substitute for both of those things well instantly that looks like a half decent sauce yeah That's 130 grams of that pasta. That seems like quite a lot by weight, but it doesn't look a lot. Okay, water, salt, pasta. While that's cooking, I'll take a few of these sun-dried tomatoes. And again, a bit of that oil. The mushrooms, which have been rehydrating for an hour or two. The sun-dried tomatoes. Okay, I'm just going to turn that down now. This pasta is pretty close to done now. It took a bit longer to cook than I thought, actually. It's quite a hefty pasta. And it's now just about, just about done. It's still got a bit of bite to it. So I will reserve half a cup full of the starchy water in case the sauce I'm about to make needs loosening up. Now those are starting to sizzle again. Just going to reserve those little bits there. Just put those in a small dish. Pasta I will now drain. Okay, the drained pasta goes in there. Together with the sauce. Yeah, and as I thought, that is going to need a bit of loosening up. I 
Okay, I believe we are about ready to plate up. And then these bits of mushroom that I reserved can go on there as a kind of topping. And the onion and breadcrumbs mix just across one side, like that. That's my main course. A bit more black pepper because why not? Let's give it a taste. I suppose we could just dress that with a little drizzle of this sun-dried tomato oil as well. There's a little bit more chilli in this sauce than I would normally expect in a pasta dish, but it is good. Yeah, that works. And that chickpea butter just gives it a slight background creaminess without really tasting like what it is. Okay, right, well, I'm going to finish this in a minute, but now back to Studio Shrimp for the wrap-up, conclusions, meal scores, and lessons learned. Studio Shrimp here with some thoughts about how this all went. Firstly, we need to keep in mind this was an expensive shopping basket, and so some of the successes of the day are a straightforward result of just throwing money at expensive ingredients. This was an experiment in thinking on my feet, nothing more. So I'm not recommending this menu, and for the same reason I shan't bother with a detailed nutritional breakdown. This is not a diet. But it's reasonable to assume that this set of dishes is quite heavy on the carbohydrates, somewhat low in protein and probably deficient in several important vitamins. Left over at the end of the day there were three tortillas, about a third each of the salsa roja and sun-dried tomatoes, three quarters of the pasta, more than three quarters of the chickpea butter and a small handful of the mushroom chips. Scoring the dishes starting with the snack chips and dips. Although this was simple, it was one of the nicer things I've eaten in this series. No nasty surprises, everything worked as expected, it tasted good, and it seemed like a complete set of things. So I think that we can give this 9 out of 10. Starter of weird tacos, I'm reluctant to give this more than 5, just because of the weird combination of ingredients, but really and truly there was nothing much to dislike here. It scores 5 just because it felt incomplete. It would benefit from the addition of any or all of the normal ingredients for a proper taco. Bonus snack... Garibaldia, I think only 3 out of 10. It wasn't horrible, in fact I ate the lot, but again there was a sense in which this was incomplete. It needed one more thing. I don't know if that thing was maybe the inclusion of melted chocolate inside the thing, or maybe these things should be baked completely crisp and served like wafers with ice cream. Main course, red pasta with mushrooms. This was a tasty dish, 7 out of 10. I struggled to get the pasta cooked right. It was a bit too firm in the middle, and at the same time pieces were breaking off, overcooked from the edges. Not a bad dish in terms of flavours though, and the hot pepper from that salsa roja was a welcome highlight. Lessons learned. I think the main positive comes from observing that even though that bonus snack wasn't a huge success, it was worth a try. And the lesson for that is that if the risk and cost is low and the means to try are immediately at hand, it's always worth exploring the what if question. Even when the result is exactly as you might have predicted and it's not even good, there is a sense of peace and completion and rest that comes from being able to say, now I know what if. Negatives, I don't know how to cook fusilloni properly. There, I said it. I tried googling this, but I could only find useful results for the smaller fusilli. Is this a pasta shape that's meant to be baked in a sauce so it escapes the agitation and uneven cooking of boiling? I've still got three quarters of the bag left, so let me know what I'm supposed to do with this pasta to treat it properly. A mild negative, obviously the flavour spectrum of the dishes was a little bit samey in places, because we only had eight ingredients. But the objective was just to try to make coherent individual dishes, not necessarily to make a series of dishes you would want to serve one after the other on the same occasion. Sort of neutral and kind of obvious. TK Maxx is not the place to go if you need all of the ingredients for a whole meal. But on this occasion it was just about doable. In conclusion then, this was an interesting little side quest, but an expensive shopping haul. I think I could easily eat well for a week on that budget at a normal supermarket. And yes, that is a hint that I might explore that in a future video, if I can figure out how to deal with the production overhead. I hope this has been interesting, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.